What do you think should come next? Because it, it was interesting. You were very respectful, right? You said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in no position to be <laughs> making any call-outs or anything like that. So, but, but what do you think should come next? I mean, yes, you had the losses, but they were to the absolute you know, best in the business. So, yeah. you know, what, what do you think should come next to you? Um, a top competitor. You know, somebody that's top is going to put me back in the top five. You know, somebody that's going to put me back in title contention. You know, that's what I want. Like I said, um, I'm one of the best guys in the world to step in that cage. You know, Philly put on a great fight, but when it's all said and done, I am one of the best guys to ever step foot in that cage in the featherweight or the lightweight division. And now I'm starting to show that. And now I'm getting back to the vintage Michael Johnson. And um, it's going to be a great a great turnaround to come back and chase that title. So is 145 where uh, the menace is going to stay now? For now. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to do another one at 145. You know, I felt really good. Um, the weight cut went very smooth. I put on some extra pounds going in there. And um, the big thing for me is if I could have kept moving and stayed focused and kept my strength through 15 minutes. So I'm glad me and Andre Philly put on a full three-round fight. I know what my body can go through now after cutting that weight. And, um, hey, the rest is history. I'm ready to make my full run again. Did you get a chance to see Gaethje's knockout? No, I was taking pictures, but I heard about it. The crowd went wild, and um, you know I'm happy for him. You know, um, you know, um, we had our little differences, but you know we're, we're still we're we're cool. And um, I told him good luck before he went out there, and um, you know I'm glad to see him going there, going to win. You know, congratulations to him. What do you think should this should get for you? I mean, are there dates, locations? It should give me a business this? meeting with the UFC. That's what it should give me. Looking to looking to work a new deal. Uh, yeah, it's four fights right now, so yeah, we'll see what happens. I want to fight the best. You want me to fight? You know, I'm happy with the UFC. I'm not not I'm not unhappy with them at all. But you know, the way I put it on the line, I need all my money up front. And that's how it should work for me, for people like me. Uh, they should use me as an example. Um, if you want all your money, you fight like Justin Gaethje. But looking at uh, the guys ranked right in your general area, the only one that's free is Kevin Lee. Would that be something that potentially? Hey, I'm, right now, I'm literally, I've fought four times in 13 months. Like, give me a break. Let me go to, let me go. I've never been to Hawaii. I've never been to Jamaica. I've never bought a house. Like, let me do some things uh, before you put me back in camp. I've been in camp for 12 months straight, you know? I do 12-week camps. That's three months. And I've done four fights in the last 13 months. That means I've been in camp. I've been out of camp maybe one month. Um, and that was when I was filming The Ultimate Fighter. So I wasn't out of camp. I've been training for the last 13 months. And I would like a break. So ideally, wait. Not a long break. I was going to say, yeah, Don't ideally. know. Don't know. Guys, right now I'm I'm flying. Like tomorrow would be nice, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm flying high on emotions right now. You know, I don't think that you should make rash decisions when you're flying high on emotions. I think I need to go back, talk to my team, talk to my manager, talk to my parents, and see when their hearts can deal with it again. And after the fight, did uh, did you kind of call out Justin yourself? 
<laughs> well, I, I think he asked me if I had wanted to fight him. Of, of course I want to fight somebody like Justin Gaethje, but same as he said, oh, I want Tony Ferguson. It makes sense. You know, when you win a devastating knockout like that and you're up in the rankings, I don't expect that to fight to happen. If he'll oblige me and he wants to take that fight with me, I would love that for to be my next fight. But I think he's just have, having some fun with me in there and just an absolute outstanding performance from Justin Gaethje tonight. Well, it certainly was. Guys, I want to ask you about this. We were talking about uh, the body language of James Vick in there. Did you notice him feeling uh, looking a little timid at all, or do you think he was really ready for what he asked for in Justin Gaethje? Yeah, it was actually something that I noticed when he got into the cage and he, he kind of made eye contact with Gaethje a little bit. And sometimes that doesn't mean anything. You know that, right? Sometimes somebody cannot make eye contact, and, but he seemed just a little out of place. He seemed a little nervous, and Gaethje was Gaethje out there. He came in with full of confidence, was ready to go, bravado, you name it. And James just kind of backpedaled, looked like he was trying to play it safe with those kicks, and Justin got in there and touched that chin. Daniel Cormier now obviously the heavyweight champion of the UFC, as still the light heavyweight champion. If John Jones comes back at heavyweight and it gets booked for November the 3rd at UFC 230, who wins that? Who wins that? Because we saw Daniel Cormier take out Stipe Miocic and he looked great at heavyweight, Dan. So who wins the third fight with them at a different weight? You know, dare I say it, I think John Jones wins it. <laughs> I think John Jones wins it at any weight class. You know, whether he's you know whether he's clean or not, I, I think he's been clean the majority of his career. I don't think I think the mistakes that he's made have been short sightedness. You know, not not being uh, not being too observant of his uh, of his of his diet of what he's taking in during uh, during his you know um, what's it called the testing period the uh, the window of of competition. I mean, the th the thing he tested positive for that he'd had after the weigh-ins was just a, a ridiculous oversight. Surely, I, I kind of have to f forgive him a little bit and think that a lot of it is just is just him not being a professional. And I hate to say that, but it's that that's that's more what stands out than anything else. Is is just his lack of professionalism. But I think that he's probably learned these lessons now, and I think that will probably allow him to become the best version of himself that he's ever going to be. And he is he's so dangerous no matter what weight he's at. He's got the reach of Stefan Struve. You've got to you've got to keep that in mind when he steps up to heavyweight. Yep. I think John Jones beats him at Conkers. He beats him at Tiddlywinks. <laughs> he beats him at table tennis. I think the only thing DC's favourite in would be a hot dog eating contest, to be honest. <laughs> oh, double chin. Yeah. Do you know, I'd watch all of those contests between John Jones and Daniel Cormier. I don't think there has ever been a better rivalry, especially because of the fact that he lost one of the bouts through a drug suspension. I don't, how, can you think of a better rivalry than those two? I don't know. Eubank Ben was pretty good. <laughs> Eubank Ben was good, but there's, in the UFC, there's been some. Yeah, well, there's been some better fights that have that have thrown rubber matches and things like that. Obviously, for me, this rivalry is it, it's been entertaining, but it's been so one sided when the action gets down to it. In UFC history, we've seen a lot more fights go one way than the other, and then we've needed a, a rubber match decider. But this is certainly a, a fight a a rivalry that will continue. I think Cormier right now will feel as the heavyweight champion. The advantages are back towards him because he could have he could he won't be dieting. He will be full size. He he won't. He's in a weight class that he's never lost a fight in before. I think that's why there's been no noise of him going back down to light heavy. But I don't think it's going to come next either. I still think Daniel Cormier will fight Brock Lesnar next, and I think John Jones is going to have to wait his turn next spring. Oh come on! There's no wait in the turn. I think Brock Lesnar's a big name, but if John Jones was back at two thirty, DC would take it. I don't know. But I, I, I don't it, know. I think Brock Lesnar's a big name that Don, Daniel Cormier would love to have on his resume, and that's a far easier fight than John Jones. But imagine how much it would burn if John Jones did swoop in and beat Daniel oh. Cormier and then sit there ready for Brock Lesnar exactly. to come back. Cormier, I mean, that would... Cormier wouldn't be able to show his, his face in his own, own, own household. Come on, the that with the nail in the coffin, that'd be really bad. <laughs> I, I kind of never want to see that happen no, to DC me neither. because he I've already seen him it. cry You know, <laughs> after his losses. It's heartbreaking because I, I know what it feels like to lose, and but not on that kind of stage, not with that kind of pressure and that kind of rivalry. I mean, that's like that's someone stealing your soul, surely. Yeah, the stage has been set now with the Brock Lesnar pantomime, nose to nose after the Stipe victory. That's got to play out. That narrative has got to play out. And Daniel Cormier deserves to have his hand raised over a stricken uh, Brock Lesnar. But this fight will happen. It will be John Jones next year, and John Jones will be the new heavyweight champ. 